Hello and welcome to the ADHD Entrepreneur Podcast. Today I'm with Josh Taylor of Finna and we're going to talk to him, hear his story. It is really interesting and uh, so I'm just going to dive right into that, Josh. If you want to talk about what is your story, how did you end up becoming an entrepreneur? Um, so uh, oddly enough, four years ago, almost to the day, um, pretty traumatic, life-changing series of events where... Um, I lost everything. Well, what I thought was I lost everything. And um, I had to do a real, I guess, drastic mental inventory of myself. And I, I had a, a little bit of a nervous breakdown. And I was basically silent for six weeks. And um, ended up in therapy and um, started um, kind of a side hobby my therapist told me that I needed to find something to do with my time, because literally I would just sit in silence and stare at the walls, right? Didn't listen to music, didn't listen to, I couldn't even handle the, the ticking of a clock. Wow. Like I could not handle that. Silverware, the noise that silverware makes, I couldn't handle any of that. So um, she said, you need to find something to do with your time. And I said, um, I said like, what? And um, she had suggested a bunch of different things. And I was, uh, I was still, kind of, I guess, uh, borderline suicidal at that point. Wow. And um, she said, um, there was one Saturday night where I was sitting, uh, I was sitting in Kenosha in a parking lot. And I called her, because I had her cell phone at that point. She said, um, where are you? I explained where I was. And she goes, why don't you go into Hobby Lobby and, and find something to do? She goes, you know, you could pick up painting. You could, you know, do something. And... Um, and so I did. I went inside Hobby Lobby, which is an awful store. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely awful. There's a lot of cool things in there. Name five cool things I in Hobby do Lobby. That. There you go. Um, so um, I go into Hobby Lobby and um, I didn't know what to do. And the only thing that stuck out in my head was the fact that she said you should try painting. Um, she said that she finds that a lot of her people find it soothing. Um, so that's what I did. I bought some paint. I have no idea what I was buying. I bought some canvas, um, some brushes, and I took it home and I started to paint. Um, and from there, um, somebody saw what I was doing um, and then said, you don't realize like how good you are at what you were doing. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm even doing. And then, uh, and then uh, I don't know, one thing leads to another and somebody else said, hey, that would look cool on a shirt, or that would look cool on a hat, or that would look cool on a hoodie, you know, and then, you know, the, the gears just started grinding. And I didn't do anything with it for the longest time. And um, a guy, and I'll never forget the moment, um, kind of got on my ass about, um, he says, you know, you have all this talent, you know, and he kind of cornered me and he, and he said, um, he said, well, what you finna do with all that? With, with, <laughs> with all that talent you have. And I thought about it for a second. I was like, you know what? I said, that's absolutely, you know, it's crazy when you, when you think about that. Because the answer that you should initially have is um, you, you should be able to do anything you want. And, um, and then I started reaching out to people about, you know, my thoughts. And I'm a big, I love streetwear. I like street art. And um, I keep thinking this is... The gap should close. Oh. Um, that's my own OCD right here. But um, is that how the name came about? Just yeah. from him asking that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. That's exactly how the name came out. And then um, I spent probably I went through. Um, I had a notebook and I was going to bring it. I didn't bring it, but I went through probably ten thousand fonts easily. Um, on which font that I wanted to use, and we ended up actually like making our own. So that logo is actually just all us. So, wow, I think I would have lost uh, patience. No, I, you know, I thought about that. It's funny that you say that because you know, there's a lot of people that say, that. "Well, I would, I would have just given," I, and I couldn't. Like, I knew yeah. what I wanted it to look like. I feel like the focus would have been hard. Like, <laughs> I just probably just pick something and said, "Fuck it, that's it." Yeah. But so you went through a lot of different designs, trying to find what you mm -hmm. wanted, design what you wanted, and then what happened from there? Um, 
I went to, uh, <laughs> I had this woman named Sue, who's like my adopted mom. And I said, this is what I want to do. And, uh, hmm. it's crazy because she, um, is probably the one person that outside of my kids that kept me alive. And, um, at that time, um, and, uh, she, uh, she sells mattresses. She's got a couple mattress stores. And in the back of the store in Kenosha, um, I said, this is what I want it to look like. This is what I want to do. And she says, well, let's bring it to life. And we literally sat on our phones and with a cricket machine and cut out what the first logo was going to be. Um, just out of like cricket paper. Yep. And, um, and then I took it home and I spray painted it on a hoodie. And I said, oh, oh, oh my God, this is, this is, it looked exactly like I thought it would look in my head. So your first hoodie was just spray painted? Yeah, spray painted. Spray wow. painted. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you still have it, I'm yeah. guessing? Yeah. Do you wear uh, it or is it kind no, of just like a keepsake? No, no, I keep one of everything, like the original of everything. I keep yeah. those in my closet in a box because to me it's important. And I think that someday it will be important. Oh, you yeah. know, I think it's, it's important to keep stuff like that because it shows... It shows you, it, it, it should show you one of two things, in my opinion. It should show you an evolution, um, and it should also show you where you failed. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, ultimately, that's the only way that you learn is, is by failing, mm -hmm. and that's why I keep that stuff. So, but it is cool. It is cool. It is cool to take that stuff out and look at it. Eventually, I want to put it in, like, shadow boxes and that, hang it in an office. That would be really cool. So now you have the logo, you have the business the concept, <coughs> um, but everything you do, really, a lot of it is around art. Right. So I guess, can you walk through, like, what does that look like for you when you <laughs> do your art? Because I know it can be a very emotional experience for you. Um, do, do you want to know how I paint or what I... Uh, yeah, I guess, like, the... Yeah, because I think it's unique how you do it. Not necessarily the specifics of, like, what brush you use, but, like how your, your mindset is when you're going into it and how you bring out those emotions and actually put it onto a canvas. You're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, this is, uh... so there's only a few people that know this, right? So if I start talking about this, this is a, this is a definitely, it's a, it's a healing process, right? So mm -hmm. it's trauma triggered and, um, hmm, this is interesting. If you're not comfortable with it, that's fine. I mean, fuck it, right? We're here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so for me, what ends up happening is um, in my head, I see something, right? And then I have to paint it. Like I have to, I have to go, I have to sit down, I sketch it out first. And then um, <laughs> I listen to music in headphones, right? It's mm -hmm. usually the same song on repeat. Okay. And that could go on for days, months, that weeks. Long? Yeah. Um, and I go through and um, and I <laughs> I actually sit in my living room and I paint up against this one wall, my living room, and big canvases, um, anywhere between four to six feet wide or tall. And um, I, I have either a set playlist, which is usually no more than three songs, and I wear headphones, and um, I, I literally paint in my boxer shorts, and um, I listen to this music, and I, um, I have the conversations out loud with the people that I should have had. Oh, wow. So that's how you're able to let it all out. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's... That's awesome you're able to do that. And though. then stuff like this happens. Yeah, which looks awesome. Can I have a picture of this? Yeah, one? I'll send you pictures yeah. of everything. Because then I'll post them up so people can see the pictures. But yeah, so then that's guess. what happens. So that was 40 hours straight. Like literally like no like sleep? Like 40 hours no sleep straight. And then what do you do with these after you have the paintings? Um, I, we, we just kind of take them. Like sometimes we go to the skate park with them. We go outside with them. I actually, um, so Burlington's got the parking garage, right? That yep. three-story parking garage. I actually go to the top of that parking garage with a lawn chair and usually my artwork. And then I literally just sit there and take, 
I don't know. I do it for me. Yeah. I take all these pictures, right? Yeah. And I just sit there and stare at my artwork. And then what has happened in the last like six months is they're starting to go up in different businesses um, around Milwaukee, Bayview. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth with a gallery out in Grand Rapids. Um, I mean, it's definitely a unique style. Yeah. I mean, stuff like this, you don't see stuff like this, no. you know? You don't see the giant, I guess, in your face. Mm -mm. Um, I mean... That is really cool. Yeah, it's cr it's. Cr I mean, it's really unique art, something different that you definitely don't see. No, you don't. <clears throat> but it's just what you're pulling out in the emotions, and that's what Correct. happens on the camera. That's exactly what it is. I mean... But then you take some of these, oh, wow. You take some of these, though, and I think I've seen them, like, on T-shirts. Correct. And, Things like Correct. that, and then do you sell those on your store online? Correct. So I guess talk so a little bit. So for instance, this, this was the first one that we did. So this, I do a lot of dye work too, so I do all my own dye work. Yeah. So that's four feet tall, three feet wide. It's titled North Carolina, right? Like so we'll, we'll give a picture of this. Yeah. Um, this was the first one that we went into production for, um, to put on a shirt. And I have like a, I don't know, a little team. These are, these people are my ride or dies. They've honestly kept the gut out of my mouth on yeah. several occasions. And I'm not like that anymore. Yeah. I'm just saying like but these are the people. you had a good support people, system around you. Right. These are fantastic people that have supported, you know, what I've done. Those look cool. And um, you should buy one, so Jordan. I definitely, I probably will. So Jordan should buy a shirt. I definitely will. Uh. <laughs> so on here, I see the number seven. What is the meaning behind that? <clears throat> so when this whole thing started, I was told that I shouldn't use my name, right? Because I have kids. And um, certain people were like, you, you need to, I guess, remove yourself from it. And um, they're like, you need a nickname. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have a nickname, right? I mean... And, um, and somebody started calling me seven and then it stuck. And then everybody started calling me seven. What's the meaning behind it? Anything? I have no idea. You should oh. ask them. Oh, okay. So they just call you and you don't know why. Yeah. I Hopefully like it. I'm fine with it. Hopefully it's a positive thing. <laughs> right. So you have an online store. Correct. Um, what types of products do you have on there? Just right now, just t-shirts, um, hats sell quick. Yeah. Um, the hats are awesome. The hats sell quick. Um, I love, I have the purple one that has the Finna logo on it, yeah. and I, I love that hat. Um, I remember that night that I gave that to you. That was, yeah. that was a good time. Um, we do hats, do beanies, um, shirts. Um, Sweatshirts just dropped. We're starting to get into hoodies. We just dropped hoodies today. Um, my eventual plan is to have, you know, pants, shirts, um, jackets. Um, I want to, I want to, Brand, you know, the branding, the logo is fantastic. It is. Um, but the meaning behind it is what makes it special. So it's not just, you know, hey, we're slapping something on a shirt and sending it out the door. And your brand is a little unique. And aside from having, I think, the the emotion that dives into what, like, the images and all of that stuff is, the pictures that you, uh, that you paint, it's actually a lifestyle brand. Um, and with it being a lifestyle brand, like you have like BMX bikers and just different professionals. Cool, These yeah, guys professionals. are professionals. So like, do you want to touch base on that? Like you do your marketing completely different than most businesses. It's kind mm -hmm. of actually, in a sense, it's kind of like Red Bull Monster where instead of doing a ton of stuff on, you know, like on TV or whatever it is, they're actually talking to professionals and having them just wear that brand to bring you awareness. Right. And like you've done some cool things with taking them in a grocery store. Yeah. So like, what are some of the things that you've done? How do you work with them? How does that all work? What does that look like? Um, well, I mean, how did you, you meet them? <laughs> I met them through a mutual friend. Um, I met one in particular. Um, the guy's name is Isaiah Johnson, um, and then uh, another guy, Joe uh, Joe Lesky. He these are two of the kindest souls that I've ever met in my entire life, um, including Joe's girlfriend, whose name is Kenzie. She's a fantastic artist also. Um, I met them and started talking to them and started sharing my ideas. And, um, and uh, they were like, dude, this is dope. 
And I'm like, I don't really know what this means. Like, what does dope mean? <laughs> you know, I'm 45 years old. Like, what is, yeah. you know? So now I know that dope is good. I mean, it's not just, you know, weed. But, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, we just started kind of going back and forth. You know, what do you want in a shirt? You know, what do you want in clothing? What do you want in, you know, because what they do is, is unique, you know? Um, it needs to be able to move. It needs to be able to flow. You know, the design has to, you know, it has to be eye catching. Um, and then, um, you know, they're, they're professional athletes. So their friends are always looking, well, what are, what are you wearing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you? And then, uh, and then, uh, I gotta tell you something funny. I, through them, I met this kid named Akai and, um, I've watched this kid grow up over the last, I don't know, 16 months, 18 months. And he's another one that's, that's, he actually calls me dad. I got to tell you something, it breaks my heart. Not in a bad way every time he calls me dad. But this kid is just, he's fantastic. But these guys, they're professional athletes. And they're wearing my stuff. Like Jared Weedauer, I, I, I will show you a picture. I will send you a picture yeah. of this kid. Um, like put on my, took these pictures, put on my shirt. It's like, I, this guy is, it's just, it's the coolest thing in the world to have professional athletes, you know, wear your stuff. So now it's like, we're kind of like a family, you know, and, um, beyond just the business aspect, I, I could call these guys right now and they would pick up the phone and be like, Hey, what's up? Yeah. And, um, Lucy, <laughs> my youngest daughter and Isaiah are actually on Snapchat together. And I got to tell you, this is funny because, you know, you always worry about these apps and you worry about, you know, talking to people, but then this girl like brags to her friends that she's like, I have a professional athlete in my Snapchat. <laughs> and it's so funny to hear it, you know, to hear her say that. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I don't, I feel like I got off on a tangent. Oh, that's okay. That's why it's called ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, yeah, all over the place. That's what it is. Uh, right. So with having them, like I said earlier, you've done some really cool photo shoots. How did you think to go into a place like Gooseberries? And because it's obscure. Right? Yeah. Everybody can stand in front of a wall and take a picture. Yeah. Right? You gotta you gotta find something that's gonna be eye catching because yeah. you know, this hold on. Have you gone in other cool places aside from gooseberries? Um, like what uh people get a little they're like they don't understand. Um we do a lot of stuff around skate parks. Um we're working with some people. I've got a buddy, um Johnny K, um, and he right now is working. Um, we're trying to get into uh, like a, an airstrip or an airplane hangar because I have an idea. Which with yeah. your rally car, oh, I, awesome. I want to do something definitely, um, and we definitely will. That'd be a lot of fun. I learned a mistake uh, in the grocery store yeah. uh, because I was new to this, yeah, and I did not uh, film as much content as took pictures. And that was where I made a mistake. Okay. Um, but but we're trying to creep into a couple more places now. But it's always um, about learning too. Right. You know, you do the first one, you don't always know yeah. what is it you should be doing, but that's yeah. how you learn. You well, I've had way more failures than, than you wanna, succeeding. Do you wanna talk about any of the failures? Um, I mean, you can look at my Instagram and see them. <laughs> <laughs> There is some stuff, honestly, that I'm like, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, why did? And what's funny is this this team because I call it a team. It's a family, right? I mean, these are these are these are some of the coolest people that I've ever met, and they think I'm cool, and that's the part where I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> because I uh, it's just amazing to me to think that these these people, these young adults, think that I'm cool because of what I do, and I'm like, yeah. you are way cooler than me. <laughs> Um, but I think it's the respect that they have for you. <laughs> right. They see what you're able to do. They probably see what you've overcome, and they just have respect for that. There's a, there's a lot of respect in our in our little group in yeah. Finna. There's a lot of respect. So, what other types of marketing things have you done? Um, I mean, you take pictures in cool places with these athletes. Mm -hmm. What else do you do? Like you mentioned, you really don't spend any money on marketing. I don't spend any money right now on marketing. So, like, what do you? How do you get the brand out there? Mm -hmm. I just keep posting. On um, what are your primary platforms? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook, and then in person. I'm charming in person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it makes sense. I would agree with that. Um, so it's basically yeah, word of mouth, and then just social word media, of getting it put out yeah. there. And um, do you it, set up like tents or anything at any no, of the events? You don't do never any done any of that. No. So 
basically right now the only place people can buy stuff is primarily on your website. Correct. And we'll list that down below too. But yeah. that's that's yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. How long ago did you start this business? Um <sighs> concept two years ago. Okay. How long um, did it take to start basically to sell your first product? So two years ago, almost exactly. So then probably 60 days after that. Oh, so that's actually pretty 70, quick. 75 days. Yeah, that's still pretty quick. Two well, months later. The way that I wanted to do it initially in the beginning was I did a short, small run of some artwork on some clothing, and that sold out immediately. That sold out in like two days. And, um, wow. and then I moved to um, I wanted brand recognition, right? Logo, mm -hmm. right? Logo. Just plaster the logo on everything that you can. Um, and I did that for, God, probably six months, eight months. Um, and then the artwork came into question and here's where I failed, right? I listened to everybody else. Yeah. I didn't listen to me. And if I get emotional, I apologize. No, you're good. I, Cause it's the one thing that I regret is, um, is I listened to people <coughs> outside, because you have a circle, right? You have yeah. a circle, yeah. right? These guys are here, they're your circle. Um, so you got a circle. I didn't listen to very specifically, there was two people in my circle that I should have listened to. And um, I listened to people on the outside, right? And they just, they just kept going and going and going. And then you second guess yourself, mm -hmm. right? And, um, I regret that. I regret not listening to myself and I regret not doing things correctly because I think that that set me back a little bit. Yeah. Now hindsight, 20, right? It's always 20 point. Um, as much as I say I regret it, um, the flip side is, is I don't necessarily regret it because I learned a lot. And I learned a lot about myself. I lost a shitload of money. Yeah. Shit ton of money. And, and sometimes um, that happens in business. Sometimes it happens, you know, right? You go through business and yeah, you have those <laughs> failures and setbacks and lose a ton of money. But again, the other side of that is um, I gained knowledge and um, knowledge is priceless, right? Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, essentially the price <laughs> that you paid is like paying for going to school. Correct. That's literally what you're paying for. Right. So some people waste hundreds of thousands of dollars going to get a piece of paper. You know, business owners, they pay it through learning hands-on. That's just kind of what the difference is. Well, I think that, uh, I think that the other thing is, too, is, um, you know, you, you, have this, uh, you have this voice in your head. Well, I do, at least. Oh, yeah, mine talks um, a lot. Well, mine tells me that I'm not good at what I do. You know, mine oh, is mine's not. the opposite. Well, mine makes myself overconfident. Really? Really? Oh yeah, I can talk myself into anything. I have a video. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I have a video of me doing a backflip on the ground without ever trying it ever in my life. I, like, did I you do it? it? Um, so no. I can do it on a trampoline, no problem. Really? I convinced myself. Well, I mean, anybody can do it on a trampoline. Yeah. So, but because of that ability to do it on a trampoline, I convinced myself I can do it on a trampoline. How hard is it to do it on the ground without ever like, you know, practicing anything at all? Like doing it it's like the slow way. Super hard. Yeah, so I convinced myself that I was going to be able to do it. I was going to be able to land on my feet and make it, and I recorded it. And, uh, I, ended and up getting, I, I ended up getting rug burn and did not get anywhere near landing on my feet. But I went into it 100% believing that I was going to land on my feet, and that's, for me, my mindset can convince me of anything. This is the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah see, that's a backflip. <clears throat> yeah, mine didn't look anything like that. And he'll randomly do them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a Kai. That's the guy I was telling you about. Yeah. Now he's going to be a Milwaukee firefighter. Oh. He's he's an amazing, amazing young man. Huh. Yeah. So, but for you, I guess you're talking about your mindset will tell you that you can't do things. Right. How do you overcome that? Um, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Um, for me, um. I, I, I don't know how to explain this without being, I guess, raw about it. Raw you know, I, I, have to, I have to go through a process, right? I have yeah. to talk to myself, and I have to talk myself out of that situation. And um, it's tough, right? You know, outside 
you know, on the outside, you know, you try to be as cheery and happy as possible, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but on the inside, you know, sometimes it's just tearing you apart. For me, what I have to constantly remind myself about is, at the end of the day, I don't really care, like, how many likes I get. I don't really care. And I have to constantly say that out loud. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know, either you're going to like me or you're not going to like me. I mean, really, at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't honestly care. Care. And that's the way you have to be. And that's the way you have to be. So if you're doing anything that makes any noise at all, no matter what, you're going to have people that really like you and you're going to have people that really don't, don't like, like you. you. And it's just getting past the fact of that you're going to have haters out there. But on the flip side, if you do have those haters out there, if they do comment on your stuff, regardless of what it is, it's going to help the algorithm to get more... Correct. You know, to get more views and all that stuff. Correct. So in the end, while they hate you, they're also helping you. Correct. And they just don't realize it. Correct. For whatever reason, they yeah. just don't see it. Yeah. But, I mean, it just is what it is. No matter what, you're going to always have people that don't like you or do like you. Um, so, so the voice, you know, you, you, you just got to kind of, you got to kind of walk yourself through it. You know, when, when you're healing or, you know, trauma-based or, you know, things that trigger you, um, you have to pay particular attention to yourself. You have to get selfish with yourself. You have yeah. to take care of yourself first. And for me... You know, practice self-love, right? You know, you got to make sure that you're doing okay. So I constantly am having this conversation inside my head. Well, what what does it really matter at the end of a day if somebody doesn't like what you're doing? Mm -hmm. What does it matter? They're who, not, who, who, who at the end of the day, really, Jordan, who fucking cares? Correct. They're not the one who has to walk in your shoes. <laughs> They're not the one that's paying your bills. They're not the one sleeping in your bed. <clears throat> if you don't like what I do, don't look. Yeah. It's not that hard. Don't comment. Don't just scroll. No, no, no. Keep right. commenting because well, that yeah, helps the algorithm. Course. Right, that, that does. gets more exposure. Keep commenting. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it still is like, why do people care so much about what other, <coughs> about what other people are doing? Right. But for a reason, that's just what it is, and that's what people do. So you have to, like you said, learn how to tune out that noise and just move on with it. Um, so one of the things that, like, I noticed you're kind of looking all over the place. I feel like you're like me, kind of ADHD all oh, over. Oh yeah, yeah. How uh, how do you? <laughs> I know. People How are going to be like, he's tweaking. I'm like, yeah. I'm too fat to tweak, dude. I'm oh. too fat. I'm so pissed that there's no brownies or ice cream here. I, I'm like, yeah, I don't have any of that stuff fuck? here. I'm like, <laughs> um, how do you, how do you rein it in? How do you stay focused? Um, I think it's, I, I have a list of goals. And I think that, you know, for me, staying focused on those goals are the things that, um, I've won, well, so I've, I've achieved a lot of my goals, right? Professional athlete wearing my stuff. Yeah. That's it. That's like done. Um, <laughs> I guess coming out of my shell, you know, self-love, understanding what that is, um, that's happened, right? Um, so to stay on task, you know, uh, I know that we talked about like your goals to have, you know, a tower that says Jordan on it. And a car wick, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what keeps me on task is the fact that, you know, I, I, I get up at 3 a.m. every day, and I don't want to do that anymore. I don't. That's, yeah, that's like, really... Like, I do not want to do that anymore. Um, but at the end of the day, honestly, what keeps me on task is there's this weird goal that I have, because a lot of people have asked, you know, what, what is your end game? My end game is to not have to set an alarm clock to get up. Yeah. I don't want to have to set an alarm clock, and I don't want my that biological clock thing to wake me up at 3 a.m. every day like it does. Like, I want to be able to get past that point. And that's my end game. And um, as what ridiculous that? as that sounds, <laughs> um, that's, that's, really, that's really truly what I want. How do you get there? Like, uh, keep going. So is it, uh, like, do you have certain goals in your business that are going to get you there? Do you expand your business? What does that path look um, like? Well, that's what we're working on now. We're working on, I guess, trying to figure out, um, I guess, what those things are that, that we need to do to expand that. Um, artwork, right? And I'm always working on artwork. Um, education, right? I'm not, I'm technologically, like, inept. I have no, I, I, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, like I said, I just downloaded CapCut, and I'm like, ooh! thinking I'm big uh -huh. shit with CapCut, and I'm like, you are not big shit with CapCut <laughs> at all. So but, it just 
continuing to learn and then mm -hmm. are you is there other Educate. is there things with your business that you're going to try to uh, expand outward on or different branches that you're going to add to your business yeah so um yes yes uh talent agency right i'd like so to retain gonna, some talent so you're going to kind of use your network of professional Correct. riders and expand yeah. from that that's awesome Correct. um like to do festivals like you mentioned like uh the Red Bull stuff, right? I want yep. to do. I, I want to do Finna Fest. Oh, that you know, would be cool. Bring in music, bring in vendors, um, other other streetwear brands. Yeah. Because I'm not. I'm not about competition. Like I couldn't care less. Yeah. There's this one guy, um, and I'm shouting you out, Jay. Um, it's it midfits, right? So this guy in Chicago, his name is Jay. Yeah. Um, cool dude, right? I met him once. He didn't really talk to me, but um, <laughs> he's he's he is. Uh, he's one of my homies, homies. And, um, like, I would have him up for this. You know, I mean, there's things like that where it's like I, I would like to, to to do, like, a fashion art show, mm -hmm. um, have the BMX guys there, you know, doing their stuff. Um, I guess that's the... That'd be really cool. I lost track of what the question was. But basically kinda, kind of how you're going to branch out and other oh, things you're going to add into your business. Yeah. Um, definitely expand on the clothing. Yeah. Definitely expand on that and the art. The more that people see what I do, the more that people actually stop. Yeah. And um, I mean, you're seeing the artwork, you know, some of the artwork for the first time, you're like, mm -hmm. wow. Oh yeah, your artwork's just, it's so <laughs> unique, it's different. It's not like a, a painting of a house with, no. you know, that looks really like no. real. Ugh. It's like just very, I don't even know what the word for it is. It's just, it's different. It's like a, I recently looked up uh, what Picasso paintings look like. So I think last time I saw it mm -hmm. was in like high school because I saw a thing about how he recently died in like the 1970s, which was mind-boggling to me. Um, so that kind of got me on there. But that's kind of a little bit like what your stuff reminds me of. It's just very, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, again, I don't know what the word is. It's just uh, abstract. I think that's the word. Yours is just very like abstract type of art. It looks so, and that's probably the wrong term for art. Yeah. I don't know what any of that is. But to me, that is what it is. Right. Um, and it's just so unique and so cool looking yeah um but that's yeah that's really cool so yeah that's i don't know it's just the art is so unique so i'm excited to put that up on here um what kind of advice would you have for somebody that is looking to you know possibly start a business they're newer in business um and they want to put themselves out there and start a business but they're just afraid to make that step do it do it you're gonna fail do it do it and fail with dignity right yeah. i mean take it on the chin every time and learn something from it. I honestly, <clears throat> people say they're afraid. Um, I'm not afraid of failing. Like I've made a career out of failing. Um, I would say for me, I'm afraid of succeeding. And I'm not. That's interesting. Isn't it? That's very, Isn't it? Why? why? Um, you're bad for so long, right? That's what you get used to. So you're okay with it. You're comfortable in that, right? What do you do? What do you do when... When it finally happens, when somebody finally sees, like, your artwork. I had a woman this weekend um, tell me, she said, uh, your art reminds me of Andy Warhol. And I'm like, I, "Like, are you shitting me? And she's like, yeah. She goes, like, you're going to be the next Andy Warhol. And I was hyper, I had to go outside. I, like, broke out in hives. Like, I was hyperventilating. Right? I'd never heard that before. I've never heard that name before. You don't know who Andy Warhol is? No. Get the fuck off the podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've, no, I'm, pretty, I'm sheltered when it comes to art and that kind of stuff. Like, um, I just so back to business. <laughs> That's I'm what I know. mildly offended. <laughs> oh. Back to business. Uh, what would I say? Do it, do it, do it with the understanding that you're going to fail and that you've got to be okay with failing. Yeah, 100%. you have to be okay with failing. Um, but yeah, if you don't have anything else, then we'll kind of wrap it up from there. Um, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank I appreciate you. you taking time out of your day to do this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, definitely. Make sure you send that artwork so I'll get that posted on here. And yeah. thank you guys for uh, watching, listening, and all that stuff. Definitely make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that fun. Um, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.